Hi, Orchid friends. Well, as you can see, I'm back. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching and commenting on my last video in English. Hope you liked it. And so I decided to make a few more. And uh, of course, all videos that I'm going to put on, on my channel uh, in English will be a translation of the videos uh, that I'm putting in Portuguese. So you can watch it in Portuguese or English. No difference at all. Okay? Okay, what I've decided to do is to publish a playlist. Put a playlist of, uh, let's say, four or five videos with, uh, let's say, 15 minutes each. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, Catlia hybridizing. That's what I really I do. One of the things that I do here in the orchid place. I've been hybridizing cattleyas for the last 40 years. And I've committed all possible mistakes with that. And I warn you uh, up front that you, if you decide to, to start uh, making your own cattleya crosses and hybrids, you will make mistakes because it takes a bit of time to know exactly what uh, gives the best results. Okay, so it'll be a, a series of, of videos and we'll cover uh, most of these subjects. And I hope you like it. Of course, it's not a, a, a matter of interest to all orchid lovers. Uh, this is specifically designed for people who wish to uh, make their own hybrids, make their own crosses, and uh, let's say start a commercial orchid business. Okay, uh, why an orchid business? Why do you have to start an orchid business? The main problem is that when you uh, start multiplying your plants, through hybridizing seeds production or uh, miri cloning, you're going to get a lot of plants back. It's not just something that you can do, uh, make 10 or 15 plants. You're going to, when you send off a batch of seeds to the laboratory, you're going to get at least a thousand plants back. And so you have to keep in mind. What are you going to do with these plants? You can't keep them all. So uh, multiplying orchids through seed or through miri cloning is something that people do when they decide to go commercial with their orchid uh, hobby, let's say. Okay? If you want to just increase the number of plants in your uh, home orchid collection, it's pretty easy. Just cut, divide your plants. I've already shown in a few videos how do you do that. Or you can purchase new plants and you can improve and expand your collection slowly. If you decide to go on uh, to do your own uh, seed production and uh, making your own hybrids, then there are a lot, there's a list of things that you have to keep in mind in order to not uh, make so many mistakes. Okay. Okay, so we're going to cover these uh, subjects one by one, and I'll show you what I uh, do, what, I, what the things that I put up first when I decide to make a new hybrid. Why? Some people just say, well, I've got this nice little cat Leo group flowering here. I've got another one there. Let's cross them both. Let's see what comes out, what comes out of this. What if? And the problem with that is that in the great majority of, of times, you won't get anything good out of that. You get inferior plants, and uh, the problem is that you won't get one or two inferior plants. You'll get a thousand uh, really bad plants. 
Not that they're ugly, they're just bad. Not They're not commercial. So you have to, uh, you have to just make a plan, real plan of what you want to obtain when you do Cattleya breeding. Okay, I'll show you an example. This is a hybrid that I made a few years ago. It's a cross between Cattleya uh, Horace and uh, Rinko Lelio Cattleya uh, Chunier. Chunier is a yellow clone. It's this. Uh, let's see if I can not throw anything on the floor. This is Chunier. It's a yellow. Horace is a light pink, looks like a Cattleya trianae, and this was a highly successful cross. I made about 3,000 plants, and the colors range from this one to yellow. This is the same hybrid, it's a different clone, it came from the same seed pod, so this one came out yellow, other ones came out pink. I've got uh, peach colors and, and, and light yellow, darker yellow, okay? So I did this cross with a specific goal in mind to make uh, good cattleyas with different colors and that grow very well. These plants are they're very easy to grow. It's, it's got an upright growth habit. I took all of this into consideration. It flowers here in Brazil, usually from March to May. So it get mother, it, it, it flowers during Mother's Day, and that's the prime orchid season for sales here in Brazil. So it's a very uh, good cross for that for that time. Okay, so uh, we're going to cover in this series of videos what you should keep in mind when you start making your own orchid hybrids. Cattleyas. I'm not going to talk about phalaenopsis, I'm not going to talk about oncidiums, lots of people are doing that, and it's not my, it's not my field of work here. I do cattleyas, okay? And I'm going to show you the mechanics, how do you make the, the, the seeds. That's not difficult, it's really straightforward, very easy, no problem at all. And some of the problems that you may encounter and some of the solutions and some of the trends and tendency. You have to keep in mind that from the time that you pollinate a flower until the time that you can obtain new plants, offspring from those flowers that will produce flowers, it'll take about six to eight years. It's a long time. So you have to keep in mind, well, what's going to be uh, good for the market in the next 10 years? We have a good example of that. Uh, 15 years ago, there were very few good yellow cattleyas on the market. So everybody started doing cattleyas, yellow cattleyas. And they, everybody stopped doing lavender cattleyas because nobody, you know, there were lots of lavender cattleyas. Nobody really is interested in those plants. So they stopped. And now, this is 2022, there are plenty of yellow cattleyas. They are not actually uh, very attractive to sale, for sale. People like it. Okay, they sell pretty well, but people are looking for good lavender and white cattleyas and semi-albas. They're looking for that. Nobody could have guessed that 10 years ago. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is the flowering season. Here in Brazil, most people who are doing hybrids in cattleyas are producing plants that flower, bloom in the first half of the year would be autumn, the fall. And uh, that's pretty much okay, but the problem is that the, you have a, 
uh, lack of good plants for the second half of the year. Because Why is that? Because most of the good cattleyas flower on the, on, on, in the fall. And they, you know, you don't have too many good plants flowering in the second half during the spring. So that creates a sort of imbalance on the, in the market. So you, you can't find any good cattleyas to buy from September to October, November. It's very hard. And uh, in the first half of the year, plants you, you can't you you can't sell all your plants that you make. So we're trying to you have to keep that in mind too. The lots of things I'll be listing one by one of these characteristics that you have to keep in mind when you start deciding to make new Cattleya hybrids. Okay. So I'll show you an example here. This was a plant that I made a few years ago. This is called uh, RLC uh, Castle Jaguar. It's a cross between Cattleya uh, Jaguariuna and California Girl. And this was made specifically to obtain Cattleyas with perfect form, perfect shape, because Jaguariuna has an excellent shape. It has a very bad, difficult growth habit. But on the other side, California Girl uh, is very easy to grow, very easy to flower, and it's very nice too. So I got, I combined both of them. It was about 10 years ago. It's flowering now. This is just one of the seedlings. I got this. Uh, this resulted in plants ranging from white to pink. And pink is in high demand now. So this is a very easy plant to sell. Okay. Uh, another example of uh, breeding would be using this plant. This is one, this is probably the most uh, used plant or a Cattleya hybrid in the world. This is Cattleya Oconi Mendenhall. It was selected by my friends at Carton Homes from Newberry, South Carolina. And it's taken part in more or less three to 400 different hybrids. Very nice plant. And it transmits its color and its shape and its growth habit, which is pretty nice to its uh, offspring, and this is very good. Okay, so this is Oconi. I'll be crossing this, this plant with one of our plants here. This is Cattleya Thiago Suzuki, which is a product from Cattleya José Dias Castro. Very dark color, a different color. It's not actually purple, it's more like you know, it's difficult to describe this color. And I think it's going to be a good cross with Oconi. So, in the next few videos, I'll be covering this, uh, the technique that we use in crossing, how do we select these parent plants, and uh, what we take in consideration when we start making our own orchid hybrids. Later, we'll talk about mirror cloning, what you have to keep in mind when you send a plant, when you take tissue from a plant to send it to the laboratory uh, to make your own mirror stems, your own clones. Okay, but for the first part, we'll be talking about uh, hybridizing. Okay, so check it out. Uh, stay with us. If you like it, if you like these videos, I know not everybody is going to uh, appreciate this kind of work. Uh, these videos because not everybody is interested in producing uh, mass producing plants of course but if you want to start a commercial orchid business you have to learn what to do in order to avoid the most common mistakes okay so stay with us and thank you for watching